come up here and dispatch him and reset my trap. Hey, I'm Shane Love, one of the Bone Brothers Outdoors, Bone Brothers Trapping. We are here today doing a little educational video for Duke Traps. I um, want to show you kind of what I'm looking for when I go to a spot. Um, this is a new area, I've never trapped it before. Uh, just walked in, you got a river bottoms off behind us here. A couple good fence rows that are real thick and then this little shrub row right here that's nice and thick. Be a good spot for a coyote to be hunting in. So if you're, you got to figure coyotes down this fence row, just kind of be bopping down through here and kind of sniffing around. He's going to come up. He's just kind of looking for something. You don't want to go too far in to your, your fence row or anything. It wants to be, you want to be set up right out on the edge. So I like this little, little grass patch right here. It'd be a great spot for like a chipmunk or a mouse any time of varmint to be digging a hole to nest in or anything like that. So what I like to do is I like to I like to get a little hole dug out in the back of your grass for and then put your bait down into that. It'd be your dirt hole set. So I, I dig this hole out and get an area cleared out here for a trap. And uh, we'll go through with that here after a bit. But I want to show you what type of duke trap I like to use why I like to use them. Um, right here I have a Duke number three. It is an offset jaw. It has a 3 16 gap in between. Here I've caught coyotes in these traps and once you get them out their legs aren't cut up or anything. Not broke like most people think. So, Alright, first tool I like most uh, it's 17 degrees here in Indiana right now. This uh, sledgehammer, four pounds. It's got a nice little digging end on it. Works great to bust up this frozen ground with. So starting out, I will, like I said, you got your grass hole back here. You're gonna be about 10 to 12 inches to the center of your trap away. So just start clearing out a nice little flat area in the dirt. All right, so we've got our trap bed dug out for the most part, about 90% done right now. Um, when you're handling your traps, you always want to wear a pair of gloves that is just for touching your traps. When you pick up your lure bucket, lure bag, whatever it may be, take those pair of gloves off. If you need to put a different pair of gloves on, put a different pair on. Um, if you have any scent from your lures on your traps, the coyote can smell that and he will actually dig your trap up and will not get caught and he'll be back to resetting that trap the next day. So I'm going to go ahead and get this trap set and we'll do a little set in there just to make sure it's going to fit in there nice and make any modifications if need be. So you'll just step on both sides of your trap, hold your jaws open. Take your dog, your little lever here, and then just go ahead and set it. You've got your jaws right there. Right here's the pan. So that's the trigger mechanism for when the coyote steps on it. This pan is night latched. A night latch, it's a it's a little notch in the in the back side of the pan where the dog sits. The dog is this little flat lever. But when you start depressing on this pan, you'll hear a real quiet, real faint click. And once it's there, it doesn't take much pressure at all, and then that trap will go off. And you set your trap flat, and it's nice and flat all the way across. You don't want your pan to be sticking up real high. It just makes a, a deeper hole that you have to dig for your trap. All right, the anchor system I'm using for this trap, it's a wolf fang earth anchor. These things are phenomenal on how much they can hold. Um, I've had me and my dad both pulling on one of these traps to try getting this out and we still had to dig it up. So we'll go ahead and get it drove in. This right here is your driver. It just slides down into this little groove on your, your anchor. 
just stick it right in the center of your trap bed and just beat it in. I like to drive it until your chain just starts to go in. You pull that out and you're done with done with that for now. So you got your trap set. You got that little hole where your tra your anchor is. You'll want to set your chain right down in there. And it looks like I need to dig a little bit more out of the bottom. Looks like the chain's getting getting hung up on the bottom of the trap and it's not letting it set flat. Alright, we've got our bed prep. Got our hole dug better for the chain to set in. So you'll just make sure your chain coils up nice and pretty down in that little hole. Get your trap set in there and you'll take your dirt sifter. Just a little sifter I had my dad made up. They're cheap at any of your trapping hardware places. Just take any of your dirt you've dug up from there. You'll want to shake just a little bit around your trap. I may actually have to go dig a little bit more up from somewhere else around the field. All right, actually back in my truck, I had a bucket of pre-sifted dirt that I just carry around. Once it gets frozen, you might not be able to get a nice spot to get any dirt. So we'll shake some of that around the edge of this trap. Got to get those jaws bedded down in there nice. Now the key to your traps are if you can press on any corner of the jaw of your trap and it moves, it's not set. It's not bedded in there solid. You need to just keep working it into your ground until you can touch any part of that trap and it won't set or it won't rock. So. You need to make sure that your trap's bedded in there where it doesn't rock. Is if a coyote walks up here and he sets his foot down right on the edge of this jaw and he feels something rock, he knows something's there and knows something's wrong and he's going to back up and he's going to dig around and he's going to dig that trap up and again you're going to have another miss and you're just going to be kicking yourself in the butt. You want to have something to stick underneath the pan of your trap or they make trap pan covers. It covers up the whole jaw of the trap that sets inside the jaws. It has a little notch to go over the dog of your trap. The width, everything, what I carry around, I just carry around a a bag that has all my scents in it. I do I do a lot of walking when I'm checking my traps, so I don't need to I don't want to be carrying a bunch of different things. So here I'm just gonna grab some fine pieces of bean stubble in this field. I'll just tuck it right underneath this pan of this trap and be good that way. Okay so we've got our little piece of bean stubbles here. Just gonna take and put this right underneath the pan of that trap like that. And all that does is keeps your dirt from filling in underneath there where when something steps down that it's going to be able to depress. So I got that underneath there, making sure that it's got the night latch set so everything's good to go that way. So we're just going to start covering the trap up with dirt now. want to make sure you don't get any big clumps of dirt 
big hard pieces stuck on there. Kayak doesn't want to put its little fragile paw onto that little piece of dirt. They don't like to step on that stuff. So we'll get all that covered up nice and pretty. dirt. You just throw the rest of that off the side. Take off your sticks, twigs, whatever. And now we'll get this little dirt hole dug out. And I've just been taking my driver Drive it down in there a little bit and then wiggle it around. You want to do your best to keep it at a, a 90 degree angle straight down instead of at a 45 where the coyote has to walk up and then look down. He can't stand back here and look in. So we got that started. We'll dig it out a little bit more. Make it look like a, a mouse is dug into it. Kind of scrape it all off the side. Okay, so now we've got all that set. Everything's ready to go, nice and pretty. Cleared out for the coyote. One thing I like to do is take you a stick, corn stalk, what have you. Just take and stick it right there at the front of your trap where that coyote's not going to step on that. His next step is going to be right down onto your trap. So now I'm up to, to putting my bait, my lure into the trap. So like I said before, always take your gloves off. Okay, here we have a uh, predator bait. It's a meat based. It's uh, just rotten, stinky meat of I don't know what all, but it's... It's foul smelling, but they like it. So that's what you got there. Let's take you a stick. Scrape it off a nice little chunk of it. Stick it down in that hole. And just go ahead and leave your stick in there. It's not gonna not gonna hurt anything. You don't want it laying around for the animal to find from somewhere. And then I'll uh, take a little bit of a gland bait or a gl gland lure. And we'll just take and stick it right back in there. Just another nice pungent odor for the coyotes to come smell. So that's it. Hope this helps you. Um, it's a learning experience. Best way to get out and figure it out is just to get out and do it. Trial and error. These videos helped me out a lot when I first got into it. So hope this can help you. All right, so when you first get your traps from the store, they're gonna be this nice, clean, shiny, oily piece of metal. Um, I took all mine and made up a vinegar water solution, sprayed them all down and let them sit overnight. It'll create a nice little rust over top of them. It's not going to be a real bad corrosive rust, but it's just going to create a nice little surface rust on it. And then you'll have to uh, dye your trap and wax your trap. Uh, dyeing it just makes it to where it's not your nice dark or not your nice bright piece of metal. The dye will get it this black color and then your wax will seal it to where it doesn't rust and it'll keep it moving nice free and fast they actually have a new product out it's called full metal jacket 
Um, I put it on some of my other traps. I haven't really dug those up yet to see what they look like. Uh, we'll let you know at the end of the season what those are like. But uh, I've heard a lot of good stuff about it. So, but I just stick with the wax. It's tried and true for many, many years. So once you get all your traps dyed and waxed, you've got your chains. A lot of guys will want to take and cut uh, a link and put another swivel in there. I haven't seen any reason for it yet. And then you'll have to attach some sort of your anchor to it, whether it be rebar or one of your earth anchors. Like I said earlier, I like to use the wolf fang anchors. They are phenomenal at what they hold. But Duke makes the perfect trap. They are very, very budget friendly for the first time person wanting to get into it. They, they last long, they last a long time. I mean, they're the basic trap. They're, there's no difference between the Duke, the Montana brand, whatever brand you have. The Duke's just the most budget friendly trap you could find out there and sturdy going to hold up to whatever you want to put into it. I've had one of them ran over by a tractor and I'm still using it. So Duke's about the only way I can go. So hope this all helped you out. Remember guys, Duke's.